We've just used the flame game widget overlay to get a flutter icon button on top of the flame screen. This technique is an alternative to using the flutter stack. The button currently is not working, but when we press it, we want to enable and then we'll get another button to disable the music. Flame audio is a separate package from flame. And so we're going to have to install it with a flutter pub add. The flame audio BGM or background music must be initialized in the onload method. Let's go ahead and add the flame audio package. Flutter pub add flame underscore audio. We're going to switch to Android as the plugin for Windows audio does not work at the current time. I'm going to press the stop button to stop it on Windows. Uh, then I'm going to enable Android for this particular project. Uh, then we're going to run it on an Android emulator. Flame Audio also works on iOS and the web. Let's launch the Android emulator and then add the directory assets slash audio to the pubspec.yaml file. In the previous video, I downloaded ukulele um, and I have it stored as music.mp3. I downloaded the ukulele uh, music from a site called Ben Sound. This emulator has a menu bar at the bottom. Uh, this is for the phone itself, so we're going to disable it. And also the overlay at the top with flame dot device dot full screen. To get this to work, you have to import the flame package. So flame slash flame dot dart and then run the flame.device.fullscreen above of the run app method. I'm also going to run widgets flutter binding ensure initialized. Uh, this just make sure that the the flutter engine is connected to the uh, flutter flame framework. These two steps are just for the UI. Um, we had to move over to Android because the Flame Audio doesn't work on Windows at the current time. Although I did hear from them that they are working on it. So now we get to the, the part that does relate to the background music, which is loading the Flame Audio into an audio cache. And we just have one music file. We had more. We could make a list. There is a load all. But we're just dealing with one music file at, at the current time. So I did put this music.mp3 file into the assets slash audio folder, but I didn't include that in the pubspec.yaml. So let's go back there and look for the assets section. And we can either specify the individual file or the directory assets slash audio slash, and then run flutter pub get again. So it's running it automatically for me with VS code. So after restarting it again, it appears that the audio file is being loaded into the audio cache. Uh, now I can play it. So you don't need to load it into cache. I just found out that um, there's slightly less problems with the initial portion of the audio if you do load it into cache. So loading it into audio cache is an optional step. You can just play it, flameaudio.bgm.play, without it being in the cache. But you do have better um, response initially when it when it first starts playing. So let's press the button. Oh, music's playing. Uh, so you, you're gonna have to stop it in order to stop the music, or you could use the uh, icons on the Android emulator and put it into sleep. So you know, if you click on the square, uh, the you'll suspend the actual app. We'll create a volume off or audio off button 
right now so that when we're developing it, we can turn off the audio. You can also suspend the app from the emulator when you're actually using it on a physical phone, right? You either the app, you either kill the app or it, uh, you suspend it. In both cases, the audio will stop playing. So let's create the second button, this icon button, um, by copying the first button and changing the icon. We're using the material icons right now. You could use a different icon set for the tutorial if you wanted to. You would have to probably load it if you wanted to use like a font awesome or some, another icon pack. To stop the background music is uh, flameaudio.bgm.stop. So we'll make that change as well too. Okay, hopefully now we'll be able to start and stop the background music. Let's start up our Android app again. Okay, it looks like it's working. You can now adjust the size and the color of the icons to match the theme of your game. So as we progress in this particular game demo, where we'll use the same tile set. Uh, this is from Lime Zoo, I think. But we're not going to use this actual map. You're going to eventually build your own uh, map. However, because it's the same theme, you can kind of play around with it. Let's see what type of color you want. The main purpose of these last uh, two videos, including this one, is to show you how to use the overlay uh, system to get the flutter budget, the, the flutter widget system on top of the flame game. And I'm just going to use a lighter pink, a lighter shade of pink here. I'll move the character around so that we can see it across different types of tiles. Um, it's not that easy to see, but I don't think we want it that easy to see. I think we want to be able to find the icon, but not have it be a distraction. So in my opinion, the black, it's too strong. Of course, you can decide on your own what color you want it to be. It's your game, so pick your own color. Um, it might be easier to use the same tile set so you could follow along uh, when we add collisions. So maybe it's kind of a similar color theme to the tiles, but um, you can change the color of the icon and the icons themselves. The buttons are in a separate file called a button underscore controller dot dart. Let's go into that file and add a variable to grab the game. And then we're going to pass the game which you have from the uh, overlay builder map to the new constructor. What I'm trying to illustrate here is how to put a variable inside of the flame game and then you can access it from your buttons. I just needed to stop the game and restart it again. So there's a string inside of flame game for the name of the soundtrack that we, we are playing. And we're going to access that string from flame game inside of the button controller because we have access to the entire game, which was sent over to us or to this file. So we're just going to print out the text on the screen to show that how to access the variable. This soundtrack name is a variable that we created inside of Flame Game. And it's just a string to hold the name of the soundtrack. Great, it's now visible on the screen, but it's black and a little small. So it doesn't fit in the style of the icons, um, both the color and I think also the size. So let's start, at least begin changing the color back to the colors.pink.shade200. And then we can 
maybe increase the size and see how it looks. So you can adjust both the size of the icons, the color of the icons, as well as the size of the font and the color of the font to get the look that you want for your game. You could also drop the position down if you wanted to put the uh, this row in a column and then set the uh, alignment of the column to main axis alignment uh, dot end. If you like this type of video, um, give this one a like. I'm thinking of continuing on with the same one, even though the you know the, the code is getting a little bit more complex. We'll we'll put it into tiled and create a collision map, which then we'll use with Flame Tiled. It's a free software tiled. It's a map editor to maybe have some theme. So our name of our character is George, and there's some other characters on here. This is a static map right now, so. But we could draw the collision around the other characters, his friends. And maybe the initial objective is simply just to make some new friends in his virtual world. Eventually we'll make the tiles, we'll make the tile map itself and we'll have more control at that point. Subscribe to the channel for updates on the more than 50 videos I've made on Flame. The videos with source code are also available for free on Teachable, 100% free course if this is a hobby. In whatever way you choose to learn, make sure you have fun and unleash your creativity. Have a fantastic day.